As you find your way to 2 Peter chapter 1, let me ask you a question. Have you grown spiritually in the last six months? Have you grown spiritually maybe in the last year? Would you say that, that you've grown in the Lord, that you've drawn closer to Him, that He's done some things in your life, you've drawn a little closer to Him, and things are a little different between you and Him, a little better? Have you grown? Listen, this Christian life is supposed to be a life characterized by growth, that you and I should spiritually grow that we would draw closer to God, that we would grow in our faith, that you and I would grow in the, uh, in the understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ as far as what He's done for us and who He is in our lives. And I think when a person puts their faith in Jesus Christ and they're saved, uh, they become a Christian, they become a child of God, they're in Christ, and Christ is in them. That same person begins um, a, a new walk in life. Um, uh, it's not a new chapter it's a new life. We're not talking about just maybe a new day. We're talking about a new life walking with God through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, having the Holy Spirit of God indwell you and I, talking about a new life period that He gives us. We're talking about being born again. Um, that same Christian that is born again that gets saved, uh, they start out as a spiritual infant, if you will, uh, they first learn how to roll over, they learn to crawl, and then they take a step. If you've got children or grandchildren and you've watched them go through this process, there's, um, there's a development there, there's growth that happens in an infant, how they grow into a toddler, and they go through the terrible twos, and you think they're never going to get out of the terrible twos. Can I get a witness? Amen. Um, we had our grandson for just a few days, and I'm just, listen, we enjoyed him, but he was two, and so... Anyhow, took a lot of attention to watch him for a few days. Um, but there's this growth that happens in children. But as a person gets saved, there's spiritual growth as well. There's steps that they take. There's making progress. As a person learns to walk by faith, over time they gain their balance, if you will. They become stronger with their legs of faith. They begin to walk with the Lord. Um, they, they move on from the milk of the Word and they get into the meat of the Word. They begin to trust God through the trials and the temptations that come. And, and when the temptations come, for someone that's growing in the Lord, um, when the temptation comes, they no longer uh, play around with that temptation. They recognize it for what it is, that there's spiritual warfare there, and their flesh is trying to get them to do something that, that the Spirit of God would not have them do, or the culture is trying to point them in a direction that deep down they know they can't walk that way. And, and they recognize that this is not just something that's harmless. No, this is spiritual warfare. Someone that's growing in the faith recognizes that there's a lot at stake. They recognize they're a child of God and that the enemy doesn't like them because the enemy doesn't like their God. And so a person spiritually growing, they understand that more and more as they grow, as they go along and hopefully get into spiritual maturity. Um, but the question is, how did they grow into spiritual maturity? Uh, it listens through daily steps of growth. It's daily walking with the Lord. It is walking in the light of His Word and trusting God's Word and applying God's Word to our lives. It is putting Jesus Christ first and putting ourselves at the end of the line. It's talking to God about what He desires for our lives more than what you and I want. Someone that's spiritually mature will lay themselves aside and humble themselves before God and say, God, I need what you want for my life more than what I want for my life. Someone that is putting the Word of God into practice, they're growing spiritually, they're walking in God's Word, they are beginning to grow and they will continue to grow if they will stay at that pace. Second Peter chapter 1 talks about growth, talks about spiritual addition. And so here it is today, we're starting a series, there'll be four messages, at least four on Sunday mornings, where we're going to talk about growing, we're going to talk about spiritual addition and growing in our faith. Um, and so here we are at 2 Peter chapter 1. If you're there, say amen. amen. Beginning in verse number 1, the Bible says, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which 
have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Verse 8, For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make sure to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I pray today that you would absolutely arrest our attention. Um, that As we've read your word and we'll read other verses, God, I pray that we would hear your voice above every other competing voice in our lives. God, I pray that we would take your word here seriously, that we would allow your word to speak to our hearts. Um, God, I pray that uh, Lord, any distraction in our mind would be far from us. Lord, I pray that we would take this um, spiritually growing, um, maturing in the faith. I, I pray, Lord, we would take this very seriously as followers of Jesus Christ. And Lord, uh, most of all, I pray today if there's someone here that's never called on you as Lord and Savior, that today they would believe on you and be born again. Lord, have your way in this place. Have your way in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you see it there in these 11 verses. Um, Peter, in this first chapter, he's talking about spiritual growth. He's talking about adding all of these things um, to our faith. But before a person can add all these things to their faith, and if you take a look at verses 5, 6, and 7, and 8, I mean, there's a lot of things there. There's a laundry list there. I mean, if, listen, if you're going to the store and you've got a list, you've got a handful of things you've got to get. There's about six or eight things there. If you were going to Walmart, they'd cost you $100. Can I get a witness? Amen. Oh, many of you were in there the other day, and we got like five things. It was $45. I thought, my goodness, that Diet Coke and Little Debbie's adds up. Amen. If you take a look here at this list, though, there's a lot of things here in 5, 6, and 7 that I'm thinking, my goodness, there's a lot here that needs to be added to a person's faith. And listen, we've got to understand, we're talking about someone that gets saved still needs to have all these things added to them. So don't think for a minute, well, all a person needs to do is get saved. Well, now, I get that. They need to be, listen, they need to go to heaven when they die. They need to have all their sins forgiven. They need to be born again, yes. But there's more that God wants to add to them, and he wants to, them to grow. He wants them to spiritually grow. And so before a person can spiritually grow, though, they need to have faith to begin with. So number one, to grow spiritually, a person must first have faith. I think we would agree with that. They have to have faith. Take a look at the screen. We'll see some other verses here. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews eleven six 6 goes on and says this, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we see it there. If someone says they want to please God, someone wants to um, be reconciled to God, someone wants to have the God of all creation you know, smile upon them, then they're going to need to have faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. So a person's got to have faith. Faith is the starting place. If a person doesn't have faith, then, then I'll tell you this, they're not going to grow. I mean, asking someone to grow in their faith, listen, they've got to have faith established. A person has got to have saving faith. They've got to put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ first and foremost. They've got to know Him. Somebody will say, occasionally I'll hear someone say, I believe there's a God, but I don't believe the Bible's God's word. And they'll have all these different statements. They want to have some form of God that they've made or fashioned for themselves. Let me tell you something, friends. What we're talking about here and what Peter is talking about here, he's talking about, look at verse 1. He's talking about like precious faith. He's talking about faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He is not talking about faith in some other God that you and I have made up. He's not talking about a Hindu God or a Buddhist type God or many gods. He's talking about the one true living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. That a person's got to put their faith in Jesus first and foremost. That's where it absolutely begins. And people will say, well, I want physical proof. You're asking me, Jason, to believe in Jesus Christ whom I've never seen? I want physical proof is what people will say. Take a look at the screen. Romans 1.20 says this, For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The person that wants to have a lot of proof, the person that wants to say they want God to show them something, God is saying in Romans chapter 1, I have shown you in creation my power is on display, who I am and my intelligent design in every organism that there is should tell you that none of this just happened by happenstance, that there is a creator, there's someone, there's an architect of the universe, and God is saying it is him. And actually he's saying it is his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. A person's got to put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I get it, whom they have never seen. Whom they've never seen. You know what? That's a pretty big ask, amen, that we're asking someone to do that. We're asking them to to believe in someone that they've never, ever seen. I I love how the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. God just starts at a place where He expects you and I to believe Him, amen? He expects that. He desires that. He has done so much that you and I should, I believe, easily believe that God is. But what we're calling people to do is put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believing that God is is one thing. And believing that God exists is one thing. But a person to have this like precious faith that Peter's talking about in verse number 1, he's talking about a person having to repent of their sins, believe the Lord Jesus Christ died for them and rose from the dead, call on Him for salvation. We're talking about saving faith is what Peter is talking about here. So, Having or asking someone to grow spiritually without them being born again is near impossible. Now, uh, granted, if you're talking to a lost person and you're giving them scripture and you're showing them all kinds of scripture, listen, that can inform them of the redemptive process and the, the redemptive nature of God and what He's doing. So, sharing scripture with a lost person is great. But don't expect them to understand deep things in God's Word without them being saved first. Amen. I mean, God can use the Word of God, and He does as a tutor. He uses the law, the Ten Commandments, to draw somebody to Himself because they can't keep the law. So He uses the Word of God. He certainly does. But don't think for a minute a lost person is going to grow spiritually. Listen, a lost person is either saved or the lost. A person is either saved or they're lost. And so what we're hoping to see is people put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And once they do and have this like precious faith that Peter's talking about, then and only then can they move on and grow spiritually. Um, A lost person that reads the Bible for two years that has not called on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation will not grow spiritually. They are spiritually dead. Now that's a harsh word. They are dead men walking is what they are. They're walking around spiritually dead because they have the old nature still intact. They have that sin nature still there. So, giving them the Bible is great, and we need to. I understand that. But to think, listen, no one is saved, by the way, no one is saved by understanding. We're saved by grace through faith. Amen. Grace is unmerited favor. Grace also means that you and I can't earn it, can't work for it. And listen, being saved by grace through faith means it's not about just understanding everything. I know a person needs to know they're a sinner. And certainly no one can get saved unless they're convicted of sin. No conversion without conviction. I believe that for sure. But I'll tell you this, no one's saved by understanding. They're saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're praying for people to have this like precious faith. And so if we're talking about spiritual growth, it all starts right here with putting a person's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we can't get the cart before the horse. We can't say, listen, this person needs to have all these things in verses 5, 6, and 7, and 8 added to them. No, no, they need Christ first. Agreed? Got to move on. Secondly, Peter lays the groundwork for spiritual growth. We see that in verses 2 through 4. He is speaking to these believers, and listen, this is what you and I have to realize. He is speaking to these believers on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I come as a pastor today speaking on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we are 
followers of the Lord Jesus Christ and ambassadors for Christ. We speak on his behalf to a world. Also to the church, we speak on his behalf. Well, here it is, Peter is speaking to these believers on behalf of the Lord. And what he's doing here in verses 2 through 4, he's reminding them that God, by his power, has given each believer what they will need concerning these things pertaining to life and godliness. Look at verse 3. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. God has, listen, if you're born again, God has given you the Holy Spirit of God to indwell you. In Christ Jesus, you have everything you'll need that will help your life pursue God's will, that will help you pursue godliness. It's there within you. Um, the Holy Spirit of God lives within you. You have a resource in a person that lives within you. And so this is possible that you and I would grow spiritually and have all these things added to us because God has put the Holy Spirit within you. He lives within you. It's amazing. So we're not uh, ill-equipped. We're equipped to be able to do this. And as a church, we come alongside believers that have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling in them. We come alongside of them and we help them. Iron sharpens iron. We disciple one another. But the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, listen, they are the heroes of all of this discipleship. Amen. And they're working in people's lives and speaking to us on the inside. And if someone says, you know what, I don't think I could ever grow spiritually, Brother Jason. Wrong. Don't insult the Holy Spirit of God. You can. In fact, you should grow spiritually and pursue spiritual growth. I look here also. Um, he'll also help us stay out of corruption, this ver these verses say. He'll help you and I stay away from things that don't belong in our lives. Amen? And here's the thing. We all say we may want to spiritually grow, and, and we should all have that desire. But whether we step toward it or not is another thing. But I can tell you this. The world is trying to corrupt you at every turn. And you're going to need God's help, all of his help, to turn away from every corrupt thing that's coming against you. There's spiritual warfare that we're in. We have a world that doesn't like us. We have a culture that's absolutely turning away from God more and more every single day. You and I, listen, there's a turning away from all that, but you and I aren't going to have a chance of doing that too much unless you and I are pursuing spiritual growth, recognizing that the Holy Spirit lives within us and is going to help us grow. So Peter here is laying the groundwork to say this is possible. This is possible that you could grow. This is possible that you could have all these things added to your life is what he's saying. This is possible that all these things could be added to your faith. Why? Because all things are possible with God. Amen? We'd agree on that. Now, the word for today that we make it hang on to, we find it in verse number 5 and verse number 10. Verse number 5, we see this word diligence. He said, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence. And then he goes on and says, add all of these things. But he says that we need to have diligence. In the original text, in the original language, this word diligence we see in verse number 5 where Peter says, give all diligence to add to our faith. That word means to, to be earnest, to be eager, to do something with haste is what he's saying here. That's, that's not passive. That's not just hoping it happens. That's not, well, maybe I'll bump into it. No, that is being intentional. That is going after something with haste, being eager, wanting it, desiring it, pursuing it. It's a priority is what we find. He says, be diligent, be diligent. He talks about adding to our faith. He said it should be a priority. We should desire to grow. We should be eager to grow. We should make haste. And let me tell you something. We make haste for all kinds of other things. We do. We know how to make haste. We know how to get busy in a hurry. We know, how to pursue, we know how to pursue things that we really, really want. We know how to go after things. We do it all the time. Uh, listen, I can, listen, right now, if you and I were to just check it and see how many Amazon packages were dropped off at all of our houses in the last week, I know this, we pursue shopping online. Can I get a witness? Amen? Y'all are quiet. I'm, I'm meddling now, Kevin. I'm in... I'm getting into the crawl space right now, amen? We know how to pursue shopping online. Ladies, I know y'all know how to do this very well. Uh, the UPS person and me, wait, listen, they, they need to get a Christmas card from our family, amen, because we order stuff online. We diligently look for things. Listen, when I need something for uh, whether it's a gun that I have or my little four-wheeler I ride around, listen, I'll go online and I'll diligently look for that, amen? I'll find it. 
I'll find that obscure thing and I'll order it online. I'll, I will find it. I will dig. I will look at reviews. I'll look at reviews and find out who says what about this thing I'm looking for. And I'll go get, I'll be diligent because you know what? I don't want to waste money. I'll be diligent and I'll go get that thing. And I'll do it with haste. We know how to do this stuff eagerly. We know how to do a lot of things with haste. Peter here is saying that we need to, with haste and be eager, to grow spiritually. That we need to go after this thing called spiritual growth. That all these things need to be added to our life, but we need to be diligent. And today, I don't know how diligent we are in the things of God. We need to ramp up uh, on the diligence meter, amen, if there is such a thing, and say, you know what, I need to be more diligent to go after the things of God than all these other things of the world. Another use of this word diligence here, we see it in verse number 10. In verse number 10, in the English we have, it says, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. So here we have this other word, this says other use of the word, but it's a little bit of a variation here. Um, the word that Peter uses in verse 10 is making sure that you are in the faith. He says, be even more diligent to make your calling and election sure. And I like this language here. He's talking to the church. And he's saying, listen, you need to be diligent to grow spiritually, but hey, hey, you better be even more diligent to make sure you're saved, is what he's saying. I mean, you can sense this. He's driving this point home. And you know, as a pastor here, I'm not a pastor that makes you doubt or makes you question whether you're saved all the time. Listen, we've seen pastors like that. We know those, those are a dime or a dozen, amen. Every now and then, though, you and I better make sure we are in the faith. Every now and then, we need to examine ourselves and make sure that we are in the faith. When you take a look here, you find that this word diligent used in verse number 10 is a little different. It is to make an effort. It's to study something. It's to labor over something is what this word in verse number 10 means. It's a variation of this other word in the original text, but it's a little different. And here's the thing. You can't work for your salvation. You can't buy your salvation. You can't just say, I'm adding this to my life. No, no, no. You've got to, listen, study and uh, listen, study your heart and soul, study your walk with God, and study this, meaning that you've got to pursue God and say, God, help me know I'm in the faith. Lord, help me study this and make sure. And if there is a doubt, Lord, help me remove that doubt. Help me study this and labor to know this. Because I'll tell you this, if a person is struggling to grow in the faith, and no matter what they do, they can't grow in the faith, the fruit of the Spirit is never realized in their life, no matter what they do, it just seems like they're stuck. But I'll tell you this, it probably, and they're thinking, I can't spiritually grow. Listen, they may have to go back to square one and make sure they're in the faith. Amen? And then once they're in the faith, then they can spiritually grow. Now, if, if you take this and you take a look at what we've read so far, we've not, not even gotten into adding all these things. Um, it, it's kind of like in mathematics. I'm going to venture into something I'm not good at. All right? Listen, I know if you and I are breaking down some mathematical equation... Um, Dwayne over here to my left, we've got to go after, if we got this problem, we've got to go after division and multiplication before we start dealing with addition and subtraction issues, correct? I remember, listen, Gene Harney taught me something, amen. The only time I've used algebra in 25 or 30 years was in a sermon, but listen, that's true. But when I look here, before we can add all these things, listen, what we've got to realize, there's heavier issues here. And when you take a look at this, we realize a person must make sure they're in the faith before they can add these things. So the greater need is make sure a person's saved, then add. You know what I mean? Then add. I look here, though. Peter says this. If you and I will be, verse 10, diligent to make sure our call and election is sure. We'll do that. Verse 5. If we'll be diligent to add all these things that we read about, and we're going to break all these down in this series. If we'll be diligent to make sure we're saved, and if we'll be diligent to absolutely pursue all these things and adding these things, he says this. If you do these things, look at verse number 10. If you do these things, you'll never stumble. How, how about those apples? How about that? Most Christians I talk to, we're stumbling all the time, amen? I mean, you think there's uneven pavement everywhere we're walking spiritually, amen? We stumble a lot. Part of the reason we stumble a lot is I think sometimes our pursuit of this spiritual growth sometimes is, listen, sometimes we're on it and sometimes we're lazy about that, amen? Sometimes we're spiritually walking toward God and trying to walk with Him, and there's times that we're just going through the motions. Peter says, listen, make sure you're saved, but then diligently go after spiritual growth. And he says, if you'll do those, th those two things, he says, hey, listen, you won't stumble. You won't stumble. 
And if I could characterize the body of Christ as a whole today, is we stumble a lot. The smallest thing derails us. You know what I mean? Well, Kevin didn't sing all the songs we like, and the preacher preached too long, or the sermon. You know, he, he uses the New King James. He don't use this. And, and you know what? It's too hot. It's too cold. And, and the parking lot's this or that. Or, you know, so-and-so shook my hand, and then, then they didn't shake their hand. We get, we get so distracted. Listen, when we're growing spiritually and we're walking with God and we're pursuing Him, all the little things that usually derail us will go away. They're less important. We don't stumble as easily over all these different things. When something comes against us, we don't stumble as easy. The enemy's wanting to take us out. He's wanting, listen, he knows he can't take your salvation, but I'll tell you this. He wants you to be discouraged. He wants you to walk away from the church, the body of Christ. He wants you to be a lone ranger because he knows if you get out there on your own that you won't be spiritually fed the way you need to be, and you need the body of Christ for fellowship, discipleship, iron sharpening, iron, all these things. So when you and I have that temptation to pull away, step back, take a break, that doesn't come from God, and it goes against spiritual addition. It goes against spiritual growth. And here it is. Peter's talking about this. If you do these things, you'll never stumble. Never stumble. i got to move on. Number three, uh, God wants you to spiritually grow. So we can say, well, grow spiritually. A person must have faith. First have faith. We know that. Laying the groundwork for spiritual growth. Peter did that in some of these verses. But then third... I want to say that God wants you to grow spiritually. And by the way, we're going to go back and catch a lot of these other verses in future sermons. But God wants you to grow spiritually. Look at verse 12. Peter says, For this reason I'll not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right, as long as I am in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I'll be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor, God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Verse 18. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. I love what Peter says here to these people. He's talking to them, making sure they're in the faith, and then also spiritually adding all of these things. But he's letting them know that God really wants them to grow spiritually, that God has went to a lot of trouble to make sure that that not only Peter and those apostles grew spiritually, Peter's talking about his eyewitness account on the mountain of transfiguration where he saw uh, Jesus and Moses and Elijah. He's talking about being in that inner circle and what Jesus showed him. And he said this, he says, here's my commitment to you, church. And listen, we need to see this. This is Peter's commitment to the early church, what we read here. But this is God's commitment to you to grow spiritually. Peter says, I won't be negligent to tell you everything that God's told me. I will not be negligent to, to, listen, to not teach you everything that Jesus has taught me is what Peter says. Peter says, listen, until the day I die and even after I die, this teaching of what I've been trying to do is going to go on. (laughs) We're in a church right now. Because God was, listen, he helped Peter's words here not fall to the ground, amen? It's amazing that you and I are still being taught the word of God, the New Testament, the account of the Lord Jesus Christ. What Peter's talking about here is this, is that God is committed to your spiritual growth. And here we are 2,000 years later from the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. God's committed to this generation of the church growing spiritually. Not just the early church, but the church of today. You've got God's commitment that he will help you grow. He will help me grow. And as a preacher, I get in that mode where I've been pastoring now nearly 25 years, and you get to a place where you can get stagnant as a preacher. God, I need to grow as a pastor. God, help me grow as a preacher. Help me grow simply as a Christian, amen? Not to mention I need to grow as a a father and a husband and all the other things. The day you and I quit growing is the day we sort of give up on God doing anything new in our life or adding anything to our life. God wants you and I to grow spiritually, 
And listen, I know there's times where things knock us down and we get hindered in the faith. And we'll talk about that some perhaps in this series. And there's times that come along where the, it seems like somebody pulled the rug out from underneath us. And listen, I'm a pastor of Salem Baptist Church. I'm well aware of all of our history. Whether it's the last six or eight years or the last 25 years, I'm well aware of all of our history. And I can say this. Whatever, if there's anything ever in any of our Christian past has ever hindered us ever, we got to get over it and we got to move forward and we got to know that God wants us to grow in the faith. That whatever it was that hurt us, even if it was 30 years ago in our childhood in some kind of church-related thing or, or some type of Christian offended us, God wants you and I to get over it, quit being offended and start growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? There's lost people that need to be saved. And he wants you and I to reach them. And we're not going to do that if you and I are spiritually flat so this is a revival sermon of sorts or maybe this series is and we didn't even get into adding all these things the laundry list that we see in verses five six and seven but we need to lay the groundwork that listen if you're here today and you've never called on the lord jesus christ your first step is believing that jesus died for you my goodness he died for you he laid his life down for you on the cross he knew that you couldn't save yourself uh, and all these things we're talking about adding. You couldn't add forgiveness of your own sins to yourself. That was impossible. Nobody else could forgive you other than Jesus. And he went to the cross and he laid down his life for all. That if we would put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the finished work of Christ, that his blood was shed for us as atonement for our sins. And when a person believes that Jesus died for them, under conviction, repenting of their sins, saying, I can't save myself, Lord, I'm turning to you. When a person believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for them and rose from the dead. And they call out to the Lord and say, Lord, I believe you're the one that can save me, the only one. Lord, please save me a sinner. Listen, when a person calls on Jesus like that, they're born again, they're saved. And guess what? Then and only then are they set on a road to discipleship in terms of growing. And then that's where certainly we come in as a church and we try to help them grow in the faith. But I tell you what, people have got to be willing to grow. We've got to pursue it. And Peter says it here strongly, strongly. Two questions for you today. Do you know you're in the faith? And if you are, will you pursue spiritual addition, spiritual growth? Will you be willing to change the status quo in your life and pursue whatever God desires for you? If so, um, uh, digging deeper into the Word of God is in your near future. Amen? Like now. Um, spending time and quality time in prayer it's got to be a priority where we're talking to the Lord. Not in some religious way or not in some, you know, way that everybody else does. You and the Lord. It's personal. It's personal. You know, I, I've got three daughters, Paige, Allie, and Hannah. And my relationship with every one of them is a little different. You know what I mean? A little different. And uh, their relationship with their mother is all a little different. And by the way, all four of them is against me all the time. Amen. I know that for a fact. But my relationship with all of them is different. It's different. There's a lot of things about it that's the same. But some of it, listen, me and Hannah connect in a different way than me and Allie connect. And me and Paige can talk about things that I don't talk to Allie and, and, and Hannah about. We're just, it's different. There's things like that. Listen, this personal relationship we have with the Lord Jesus Christ and, and you and I praying to Him and being in His Word is very personal. It's very personal. And I would say this. Step toward Him and say, Lord, I need you to help my walk with you be closer. Lord, help me grow in the faith. Help me pursue these things that we're going to be talking about over these weeks. Because I'll tell you this, this is the will of God for you and for me. Let's pursue it, amen. Let's pursue it. Let's, let's pursue it with haste. Let's pursue it more than this other, you know, online stuff that we, we have to go investigate and find or Google. Let's, let's be diligent to find what God wants for us, amen. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, we love you, and we thank you for your word. Lord, if diligence is the word for today, then Lord, help us be diligent to know that we're in the faith and diligent to grow in the faith. Lord, have your way. Lord, should there be anyone online that's listening to us or anyone here in the sanctuary that needs to be saved, I pray that their heart would sense your conviction and they would call on you for salvation. And Lord, I pray for the Christian here today that uh, feels a little stuck in their walk. God, that they would recognize that this, um, this message today, one of a handful of messages, is, is for them, it's for all of us. Lord, help us embrace growing in the faith. 
Help us seek whatever you want for our lives. And that might mean culling out some things that need to go and stepping toward the things that you want to add. Lord, have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to stand to our feet. Go ahead and stand. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation. I'll be here. If you need to come pray with me, I'll pray with you. Maybe you need to come to the altar and pray. That's fine. I always let people have their space. You come pray. If there's something I can pray with you about, won't you come? Uh, most of all, if you've never given your life to Christ,